Production funding for Living Smart with Patricia Gross is underwritten in part by Halliburton. Stabbing your food, shaking your napkin, saying thank you and please. Do manners really matter? Learn why etiquette and proper behavior may open more doors than you can imagine. Next on Living Smart. Hello, I'm Patricia Gross. Welcome to Living Smart, the show designed to help you get the most out of life. Today's guest, etiquette coach Marilyn Ann Smith, will show us how to make a good impression on others. She will expose us to a more courteous way of life and teach us how to be more considerate. So have pen and paper ready. We'll be giving you a list of resources at the end of the program that will surely make you more charming. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, lovely of you to come tonight to my dining etiquette seminar. My company is Magnificent Manners, and my name is Marilyn Ann Smith. Manners. We don't talk much about them, but we sure do notice when others don't have them. I was so glad not to see anybody flap it in the breeze or any gentleman (laughs) stick it in their tie. Those are definite, definite no-nos. Magnificent Manners guru Marilyn N. Smith learned them from her disciplined parents. Well, particularly in a military family, table manners were of utmost importance, and they really are in general in England. If you didn't put your knife and fork together correctly, you didn't come back again to visit. It's that strict. The strict upbringing didn't end at home. She attended convent school where there was a high price to pay for lack of manners. Oh, you wrote 5,000 lines, and you went into detention, and you washed up the dishes for two weeks instead of one week. She was expected to be a lady at all times. She attended balls, formal events, and took modeling lessons. Then in her 20s, Her father, a squadron leader in the Royal Air Force, moved the family to the Middle East. I decided that the colonial life was a little bit too lazy, swimming every day. I joined the local airline, and that was called Aden Airways, and we were trained by BOEC personnel, again, very correctly. The travels took her all over the Middle East. The colonial British life there was very formal, and I was one female with Mm, hundreds of young men to choose from. There were all the RAF squadrons, the naval officers, the army officers, and all frightfully correct. After two and a half years, she joined Pan Am Airlines and was transferred to the United States. I just thought it was such a modern place. It was the place of the future, and that, that appealed to me. But not so formal. Americans were particularly friendly and generous with her, but she found living here a bit challenging. I think the casualness, truthfully, the casualness of the life took some adjustment after what I had been used to. She eventually married and moved to New York to become the dining and etiquette services coordinator for one of the top advertising firms. Food and fine service came into my life again, as well as going out to wonderful events in New York and going to balls there. So again, exposure to all this was constant. When her husband was transferred to Houston, she made headlines with her knowledge of proper manners, etiquette, and interior design. She successfully organized sophisticated balls, fundraising galas, and official events. She met Mr. Thatcher, Princess Anne, and other dignitaries. This went on for years until the Mayor's Gala in 1990. That night ended my career of fundraising. I hung up my evening dresses and started a new life. Why? I got divorced. (laughs) By that time, I had two children. It is a huge challenge to suddenly start a completely different life on your own. Good afternoon. I'm Marilyn Ann Smith. So she began to work again. So I'm sure in your daily life, you use the phone many, many times. Marilyn started her company, Magnificent Manners, in 1991 as a single mother. Since then, she has taught thousands of adults and children how to behave properly in every situation. If you are answering the telephone as a receptionist might, it's really important to have a smile in your voice. Mr. Smith, may I present Brittany? And basic business etiquette. Nice, firm, but not too hard. And gentlemen, never squeeze a lady's hand. It hurts when you have rings on, doesn't it, girls? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And no wet fish handshakes. She married again a few years ago. Anne continues to teach all ages. Even people like me who until class thought I knew the proper way to eat soup. Please start. Your soup is served. 
<laughs> now, would anyone like to comment on that? She did yes. it wrong. She I, did it wrong. Yep. So manners do she matter. Take the spoon away I learned it the hard way. It, it comes right to yes. some people as a realization that if they have some charm and if they know how to behave, it brings them confidence, good health. Yes. Oh, yeah. I feel it's so important to get that message across right. that money can take you certain places, but manners can take you sometimes through the door that money will never open. No wet fish handshakes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Marilyn. I just love that last picture. <laughs> Would you say a better definition of manners is being considerate and polite? Well, yes, that's the true definition of it. it. That's what it's all about. It's a code of etiquette that's laid down, rules that we know to live by and make life a little pleasanter right, every day. Right. Um, let's talk about children. How, what are the first things parents need to teach their children about manners? Well, I believe they're never too young. Right. They can learn by example. They will absorb from the parents. So if you're continually courteous to your children, continually, Mm -hmm. they will get it. So the please and thank yous, the putting away their toys, give them treats, right. uh, reward them, but always um, making sure that they have respect for others, okay. that they learn that there are other people in the world other than themselves, right. and this will behoove them later in life. So but it's never too early to start with those little ones. And reliability, some of the responsibility, common yes. courtesy... And as they uh, get a little older, they can start taking on chores, teach them how to answer the phone for mummy. Right. You know, it's very important if uh, a friend calls and the child doesn't know what they're saying on the phone, and I'm sure that's happened to you. Right. Teach them how to write down a message for the parents. And as I say, reward them and they'll do it. That's wonderful. Um, let's talk about basic uh, manners. Share with me some of the basics that we need to know. Well, I think, again, reliability. Don't be late for appointments. Don't just, just assume that it's all right to do that. If you're going to be late, call. Do what you're go going to say. You do something, then you do it. Right. So you need to become a responsible person. Uh, we're all leading very, very busy lives, and we don't have time for that sort of thing. People are so rude and abrupt on the telephone. And I've been uh, helping my husband in his office of late, and I cannot believe salespeople. I don't know how they get the sales, to be honest with you. They hang up. Um, this courtesy is Are disappearing. Gone. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Uh, road manners. In the morning, you start out on the freeway. People would just as soon knock you off the freeway right. as Cutting let them you off. go. Yes. And I just don't understand. It just takes a second to let someone in. Right. You feel happier and they're happier, I would think. That's right, that's right. Let's talk about uh, dining etiquette, because this is yeah. kind of where you notice whether people are, have manners or not. It's mm -hmm. very important, and yet we don't pay that much attention to it. What are some of the things, for example, holding your fork and knife? How do you do that? Okay. Well, I just so happened I bought oh, some good. today. <laughs> and uh, I would just like to show you that with the fork and the knife, there's mm -hmm. a ridge. Okay. So no matter what country we're from, because we all have different manners, as right, you know, right. we start this way, and we hold our elbows in. We don't flap the <laughs> We put the fork into the food and make one cut. Okay. So you're going to see this kind of thing, the stabbing, the holding the knife like a pencil and That's soaring. Wrong. But these are no-nos. <laughs> Those are no-nos. And quite frankly, it does set you apart from people who have perhaps learnt the acceptable way in the world. And you talk about also about cutting your, uh, cutting your meat uh, one at a time. You don't yes, one do piece everything. at a time. Right. You leave the cutting up many pieces for the babies. Right, right. <laughs> you cut one piece eat it, whether it be the American way or the European way. You still eat And up you go. Okay, and then yes. buttering your bread since you have the knife there. All right, well, this is what we <laughs> don't do. You don't take the roll and cut it in half like a saw and slather the butter on. <laughs> and you'll see it, Patty. Right, right. No, rather that you take a small piece of bread, break it off, take the butter knife, take the piece of butter onto your butter plate and gently put just, it on. Just one, one put, time. Yes, one time. Put okay. your knife down and pop it in. Okay. Some of the other dining etiquette uh, questions that I have for you are, for example, um, when do you start? Let's say you're at a, a dinner party. When do you start eating? Do you wait for somebody? Yes. What, what do you do? Particularly in a private home at a dinner party, you wait until the hostess mm -hmm. tells you. Now, if she's served the meal and she doesn't want it to get cold and she asks you to please start, you do. 
But otherwise you wait, you don't do anything, don't touch a thing until the hostess does. Just and and if lead. you don't know, you have like three forks, three knives, how do you start, from the outside in, from the inside out? Correct, you're right. Outside in, so no matter how many knives and forks are there, you need to you be know intimidated. What to do. You just go from the outside in, or again, watch your hostess. Watch your hostess. Holding a, a wine glass. Depending if it's a red wine or a white wine, but you hold it by the stem so as not to disturb the temperature of the wine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, putting dirty utensils on the table, That's not a, a good thing. No -no. You always put it on your plate, correct? Yes. Okay. Where on the plate? Because I know there are different ways to do it. Yes. Well, supposing you had uh, used your dinner knife to cut that tomato, tomato on the plate <laughs> because you didn't want to squeeze it with the fork right. into someone's eye. So now you have a dirty dinner knife. Don't put it on the table. Just lay it across your plate and ask the waiter for a fresh one. Right, right. Now, you have a funny anecdote uh, on your first dining, dining uh, oh, experience. Well, Tell me about that. Yes. After I was married five years ago, my uh, husband and I decided to have a dinner party and mutual friends, and I wanted, of course, to make a wonderful impression. Right. So I set a beautiful table, and the gentleman on my right, a rather well-traveled oil man, promptly gathered up all the silverware and put it at the top of his plate. And I, of course, had to remember my manners, even though I was shocked. <laughs> don't say anything. Don't embarrass the guest. Rule of etiquette. Don't embarrass anyone. And there we went through the meal, and he would just take it out of the pile. Oh, how funny. Um, let's talk about cell phone. That, that's a very modern, uh, really, it's, it's a modern phenomenon, if, yes. you, if you want. And, and, and I... I find that we don't know because it is new. It's modern. And, for example, you're in the airport and you have, I've had this happen to me, where you have free people talking, a per, you know, personal conversations that I have to listen to and I don't really mm -hmm. want to. Mm -hmm. What's the right thing to do and the wrong thing to do when it comes to cell phones? Well, I say that when you go out to a restaurant, if you can't give that person one hour of your time and turn that cell phone off, it's a pretty sad thing. We all lived without them before. Right. And supposing you're a doctor or your mother and babysitter, well, you could put it on vibrate if you can't leave it off. Mm -hmm. So but you do not have your private conversations in front of other diners. You disturb them. I was in a local restaurant when cell phones became quite popular. There were three men sitting at the table, all talking. I swear they were t talking to one another. <laughs> it was not possible. <laughs> it's quite so it's courtesy, again, to other people. If you have to have that conversation and things happen, just go outside. And um, movie theatres, for example, a friend of mine the other day told a lady, please turn off your cell phone. Touched her and the next thing she was ci had a citation for um, molesting this lady. Oh, interesting. So just mm. to tell her to turn the, the yes. phone off. So she they was... should be turned off in churches, public things, when people are talking. What about if it's a business call and you need to, you need to answer... Is there a certain amount of time that you can do this? You get up from the table and you talk for five minutes, I assume. You wouldn't, don't want to be talking for 45 minutes, even if it's no. an important business call. It can wait. I think it used to it be able to wait. It would be a polite wait. thing to do. It would be a polite thing to do. Okay. Unless and talking your guests understand that it's so vital, you have to excuse yourself for that long. But right, right. But you, may, you have to make, make it uh, a considerate uh, yes. uh, approach. What concerns you the most today about people's manners? Because well, we, we are getting worse, I think. Yes. I think it's sort of a sad thing that uh, television, music, the Internet has invaded our lives so much that this is the example that people are seeing, and it isn't always um, like Channel 8, if I may <laughs> say you, so. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. And so I think people don't realize how it can help them in their lives to display these common courtesies. And then people live rushed lives. Uh, families are not together anymore, so the importance isn't there. And if people would realize that by opening doors for people, by saying good morning, by letting them go first, by just general considerations, saying please and thank you over yeah. and over, it doesn't matter how many times a day when yeah. someone's done something for you, you know, it would be uh, to their advantage mm -hmm. in business mm -hmm. and their social life. Right, right. And what, what do you think are the most common mistakes people make when they travel abroad when it comes to manners and etiquette? Well, I think if you are going, especially on business, the first thing you should do is look on the Internet. We have wonderful resources there. Or call the consulate of the country mm -hmm. and find out the habits. You can offend so easily. And um, manners in many other countries, as you're aware of, Patty, are a little bit different. The standards are different. We're very casual here, really. Right. 
and so we don't want to put a foot wrong. So check it out first. What is their religious bent? Uh, do they like to um, take time before they get into their business? Mm -hmm. Some people like to talk about the weather first. They're right. offended if you, if you launch don't. straight right. in. Right. Mm -hmm. And for example, um, in England, people offer their hand, their right hand, to shake, and that's a sign of peace, uh -huh. that there's no gun in their hand. Right. Did right. you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> and then in Germany, you mustn't uh, shake hands with one hand in your pocket. Why? There's it's a reason, just, but, there's no, a reason, but yes. no one knows. Right. It's, it's just considered not rude. done, uh -huh. rude. And the same way if you go to Saudi Arabia. A right. man must not sit with his legs crossed and the sole of his uh, shoe facing okay. a local person. That's insulting to them. There's so many innuendos. You need to check it out thoroughly. That you need to thoroughly. know before you go. If and you want to succeed, it's yes. very important. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about dating etiquette. What uh -huh. are some of the things that are very important, <laughs> most important? Yes. What are some of the things that we should know about when we're dating? Well, as a married lady, Patty, for five years, I was single for a while, I found out from my uh, asking people that things haven't really changed too much. <laughs> Women say they'd like men to please be on time. Right. Call if you're not going to be. Let them know where they may be going. And um, don't drink too much. Don't use bad language. Don't just assume that the woman's going to accept that kind of thing. Right. Most women seem to still want to be treated like ladies, have yes. doors opened and this kind what of thing. What a concept. <laughs> yes. And the, the one thing that is so different is uh, they go to meet the gentleman mm -hmm. or the man, as right. the case may be, at right. the place they're going to have this date. No longer is it acceptable to come to the house and pick you up, uh -huh. which is a sad thing, at least right. for the first couple of dates. Uh, I think many women seem to prefer to meet for coffee first, just right. so they know, especially with internet dating and right. such things. Right. And a lot of men uh, say that they wish the women wouldn't talk about their problems, not talk about past loves, divorces, <laughs> child support. Be just... Pleasant. Exactly, on your first time. Be light. Right, mm -hmm. right. I don't want to get too deep about it. No, not too deep, not the first um, time. You also talked about flirting and how women should flirt and how men should flirt. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's all in the eyes. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, I think that, uh, to quote my husband, he said some men need to be hit between the eyes with a two-by-four. Two-by-four? <laughs> to get it. Uh -huh. But he likes uh, subtlety, and I think most men do. Mm -hmm. And it's all in those eyes and getting the man captured in your vibration. And you mustn't overdo it, or it can be sexually misunderstood, right. to be right. honest, so from just... what I hear. So it's a subtle look, a smile, mm -hmm. and friendliness, but then hold back. Okay. Let them audition, as, as yes. Nan Holinky says. What, what, do you th what area of etiquette do you think is particularly relevant today? All of it. All of it. I know some people may think it's a little old-fashioned, stuffy, or whatever. But again, I say that... Um, it affects our whole life every day from the moment we get up. And we should be polite in our own homes, respectful right. to our families. And the moment we go out of the door, we represent our families, our business, ourselves. People are watching. And so I, it's all relevant in my book, to be honest. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, the British are best known for etiquette and manners? Why is that? Well, I think, sadly, that's becoming a little thing of the past. We had so much protocol, the royal family and all of that tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, schooling, as I've told you before, was very strict. And so we were really taught that that was important, part of our lives. We had to be that way. There was no choice. Mm -hmm. But with the advent of TV, casual lifestyle, blue jeans... <laughs> right, right. And also the social class structure has changed a lot in England. So more and more people are casual right. about their life. Now, outside my mother's house, a school bus comes every day, a beautiful bus, by the way. And these little children get off in uniform. That's a dying thing now. Right, right. They're so polite, it's sort of astonishing uh -huh. because the discipline is still there in the schools. But it is fading out, sad to say. I wonder why that, that has happened over time, though. There is something to say about being polite and being considerate mm -hmm. that should really pass the taste of time, and it doesn't. Just in certain circumstances and uh, certain parts of the society. Well, what, what about some people who say, well, this is just too stuffy, it's just too oppressive, you're not being yourself, you're not you know, being spontaneous. How do you, how do you respond to those people? 
Well, poor you. <laughs> I can have fun. I still try my best to be you know, well-mannered. Right. And a little charm goes an awful long way in this world. Right. So I'm sorry for you if you don't <laughs> agree with me. How do you think, um, how do you know you're living smart? Well, Patty, that's a lovely question. <laughs> I think by getting a little older, we learn to balance um, our marriages. I have a wonderful husband, my family and my job, and my friends. Learning to balance them and giving time to nurture my soul with beauty and spirituality and feed my body correctly and have peace. Why do you think it is important? You said that uh, manners can take you much further in life than, than money and, and uh, possessions. Why is that? I mean, what is it about manners that, that make you get ahead of the pack? Well, I truly believe that if a person knows how to good, give a good impression, they know how to dress correctly for the occasion, they open their mouth and nice words come out, they have exuded an air, they're much nicer to be with. People want to take you places, offer you opportunities, if you can represent yourself that way. And I know in my life, it certainly wasn't because of money, I've been offered amazing opportunities and I've been to wonderful things and it certainly enhanced my life. That money couldn't have bought it, really. Right. Which area do you think of the world requires more manners than others? If it isn't Europe, you know, you'd think England. But England has changed quite a bit. Yes. But which areas do you really, really need to be careful? Because you talked about religion, mm -hmm. and that can be very offensive if you, if you do not conduct yourself correctly. It yes. can be ex not only offensive, it can be dangerous. Yes. Well, I think you're going out to the Saudi Arabian countries. You must be very, very respectful. I think in uh, China and Japan still, there's a lot of formality. Mm -hmm. It's very important to them, you know, the way they hand business cards, the way they stick to strict protocol. I think those countries particularly, you need to be more subdued. We're so outgoing here, and I right. include myself right. in, right. as an American, that we just need to tone it down and... Uh, well, you said Be business careful. cards. What do you mean? Like in Japan, you, you can't give out business cards? No, they do. Work? They, they do. do but, and and you have, it's part of a, almost a ceremonial. And do you have your English uh, name, and then on the reverse is Japanese. Oh, that's the right. That's in, in all Asian countries, isn't yes. it? I mean, that's very And Russia. Common. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But that's more uh, ceremonial. I mean, absolutely you hand it. How important is dress code when it comes to manners and etiquette? Well, that's a good question in today's life, Patty. You know, the young people today, that seems to have gone by the wind. But I feel um, that, as I said earlier, women like the men to dress nicely. Um, I think that you exude something by the way you dress. And if you want to be treated a certain way, then you should be a little more subtle in your dress. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You are treated the way you present yourself. And I that's feel. very important for, for um, interviews and yes. for international business. Yes, and if you don't know the dress code, just find out. If you're invited to something, just pick up the phone because often invitations are misleading. Right. They, they don't explain. May I tell you one quick story? Sure. Uh, a British consul general and his wife, who used to live here, they received an invitation in New York to a fancy dress party. So they went, knocked on the door. The host opened the door in black tie, and the consul general and his wife were dressed as Mickey Minnie Mouse. <laughs> so that was fancy dress. They did you see. not. They did it's not a different fit in. Way. They did not so fit if you're in. not sure in another country, then uh -huh. do ask. So what you, do you don't think, embarrass yourself. What do you think is the most important lesson you've taught your children about manners and etiquette? Well, I hope is to be accountable for your actions to remember to always thank people when they've done something nice for you and to act like a lady and gentleman in all circumstances when possible. And Be reserved. When, and if someone mistreats you or someone is rude to you, how do you respond to that? <laughs> well, that just that's, when, that's a test. It's a test. We mustn't have knee-jerk reactions, but we learn that as we go along. And the best thing is to kill it with kindness, I suppose. Smile, try and be gracious, and move on. Thank you so much, Marilyn and Smith, for joining us. Well, thank it's you a for great, having great me. Great advice. <laughs> thank you for having me, Patty. And for more information on Marilyn and Smith, you can reach Magnificent Manners at 713-783-3714. That's 713-783-3714. Or check our website, magnificent-manners.com. 
Another great website for international etiquette and manners is Cyberlink. It's C-Y-B-O-R-L-I-N-K, cyberlink.com. And keep in mind, being considerate and polite is a great way to live smart. Please remember to visit our website, houstonpbs.org slash living smart, for a complete resource list. And feel free to share your own views on etiquette and manners. You can call us with your comments at 713-743-8513 or email livingsmart at houstonpbs.org. And that's our show for today. We hope you've learned some rules of behavior that will help you succeed in life. Make sure you tune in to our next episode with therapist Newton Hightower on anger busting. A former rageaholic, Dr. Hightower will teach us his method to stop getting raging mad. I'm Patricia Gras. Have a great week. Thank you.